Hey guys, I'm Eric at AeroGuard Flight Training Center and today we're going to learn how to use the Z6B uh, to calculate our time in route. Uh, and the easiest way to help us, help us with that is we're going to use an example question from the FAA knowledge test. So let's dive into that question real quick and uh, we'll take a look. So the, the question reads, uh, what is the estimated time en route for a flight from Claxton Evans County Airport in Area 2 to Hampton Varnville Airport in Area 1? It continues to tell us the wind is from 290 degrees at 18 knots and the true airspeed is 85 knots. It also gives us an additional reminder that we need to add two minutes to our cl for, for climb out. So we have three possible answers. The first is 44 minutes, the second is 35 minutes, and the last option is 39 minutes. So as you see, they're all pretty close together, so we're gonna have to be very accurate with this E6B. In order for us to solve this question correctly, really we're gonna have a, a couple of things that we need to uh, ultimately calculate. One thing that we're gonna need to know is What is the distance for this flight? We're going to need to know that distance. We're going to need to apply then our ground speed to that distance. And then the last step that we're going to need to do that we can't forget about is to add our two minutes for the climb. Okay, so our first step, let's jump into the chart excerpt that they gave us and let's calculate what this distance is going to be. Okay, let's look at the image provided. And to start, let's draw the true course by, connect, by connecting the Glaxton Evans County Airport to the Hampton Varnville Airport. I'll put a little arrow to remind us which direction we are flying. Next, We'll use our plotter to measure the true course and the distance. To measure the true course, we will simply put the top edge of the plotter along the course line and rotate the, the grid uh, until it is aligned with either a line of latitude or longitude. Uh, in this case, we'll follow the direction of the arrow and our true course is approximately 0.45 degrees. We can then switch sides uh, of the plotter and using the bottom edge of the plotter uh, we'll find the sectional scale because uh, we're using a sectional chart and measure the distance. In this example our distance between the two airports is 57 mi nautical miles. So now we know our distance is going to be 57 nautical miles and we also learned that our true course is going to be 0, 0.45 degrees. Now we'll jump over to the E6B and correct for the wind to ultimately determine what our ground speed will be. Then we'll be able to calculate what that time in route will be and add our two minutes and be good to go. So step one Jumping over to the E6B, we're going to follow the normal steps. So the, the first thing we're going to need to do is mark our wind dot. So to do that, we're going to place our wind direction under the true index. In this case, the wind direction from the question was 290 degrees. So we're good there. And then we're going to mark the wind speed up from this center point. I chose 100 as a starting point simply because it makes the math a little bit easier. So in this case, our wind speed was 18 knots, so we're gonna just mark 18 knots above this center dot. So there's our mark, our wind dot. The next step will tell us that we should rotate our true course under the true index. As we recall, our true course was 0, 0.45 degrees. So what I'll do is rotate in our true course. And next, our next step will be to 
move this wind dot until it's under our true airspeed. So in this example, they told us our true airspeed was 85 knots. So I'm simply going to lift this up until we see 85 knots uh, is riding under the, the wind dot. Now we can read our answers. The first thing we can read is a wind correction angle. In this case, that's not really that relevant to answering the question, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. The next part is we can read our ground speed under the center dot. So our ground speed is approximately 91 knots. So if we go back to the board here, uh, we can see then that our ground speed is now 91 knots. Okay, so now the question is, how are we going to use the distance and the ground speed to calculate uh, what our time in route will be? For that, we're going to need to switch to the other side of the E6B. So I'll spin it around here. And now we're going to follow this same instructions that you see written down here. So we're going to put our ground speed over the black triangle. And then what we'll, we'll find is our distance on the outer ring and then the time in route on the inner ring. So in this case, our ground speed is 91 knots. So there's our black triangle. There's 91 knots. That looks set to me. Now we need to find, according to the instructions, the distance on the outer ring. So in this case, 57, which is about where my thumb is here. So we have 55, 56, 57, and that's going to be across from the time. So the time is about 36, 37, 37 and a half. So our time in route, based on these two, is about 37 minutes. Okay, we'll take that, we'll add our last two minutes for the climb out, and we should then get a final answer of approximately uh, 39 minutes. Let's go back to our possible answers here on the question and see which one is correct. So we see the first answer was 44 minutes. Nope, that's not correct. Our second answer was 35. It's pretty close. But our last answer was 39, which is dead on the money with what we got. I think that's going to be the answer for us. Great. So I'm glad we got the right answer out of that. I hope you have a little bit more familiarity now with how to use this E6B uh, to calculate our time en route. My name is Eric with AeroGuard Flight Training Center, and we'll see you for more videos in the future. Remember to like and subscribe, so that way you can just keep getting more and more of this great content. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.